The DuPont Company presents The Cavalcade of America. Speaking for the DuPont Company is radio's distinguished news commentator, Gabriel Heater. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, the Cavalcade of America brings you the story of Will Rogers. And I can't recall any time when it seemed more appropriate. Up and down America, millions of us are better Americans because of what Will Rogers left behind. And so tonight, the Cavalcade of America journeys back down memory lane to reach out again for that friendly handshake, that quiet chuckle, Will Rogers. And now Don Voorhees and the DuPont Cavalcade Orchestra ring up the curtain. They're going to play Sing for Your Supper from the latest Rogers and Hart musical, The Boys from Syracuse. <laughs> gentlemen, the narrator and chronicler of the Cavalcade of America, Thomas Chalmers. Tonight we're going to tell you a story of a man who brought many moments of happiness to his fellow men. A man whose kindness and simple homespun philosophy is a story of all that's noble and permanent in the American character. Hello, folks. All I know is just what to read in the papers. Will Rogers. About the turn of the century, on a sunny, dusty plain just outside of Johannesburg in South Africa, a little American one-ring circus and Wild West show is set up. Outside the tent is gathered a group of natives and white settlers, 
watching the proprietor of the show, Texas Jack, twirling a lariat. In the group stands a gangling young cowboy, listening to Texas Jack's spiel. Now, folks, you step right up close, a little closer, please. That's right. Now, it won't cost you a thing. I have just seen me do this year now stupendous rope trick. And I'm making a bona fide and sensational offer of 100 American dollars. 100 good old USA simoleons to any man, woman, or child in the audience who can duplicate that trick. Now, if he thinks he can, just let him step right up here and try it. Just a minute there, brother. Yes, what is it, partner? If you don't mind, I think I'd like to try my hand at it. <laughs> well, here's your chance to show off what you can do, partner. Step right this way. Don't be afraid of the crowd. They won't bite you. That's it now. Right down here. Uh, get out of the way, Sonny. Let him through, please. All right, partner. Now, here's your rope. Uh, uh, thanks, brother. Well, he, he must think he's good. <laughs> All right now, pal. Let's see you do it. Easy does it, you know. Right slick rope you got here. Well, he sure is doing it pretty good. He's better than the other fellow. Ah, uh, that's the ticket, cowboy. You're okay. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Oh, that's all a part of the show. He's a regular cowboy. I'm sorry, mister. That's just where you're wrong. I never laid eyes on him till this year minute. And to prove it, I'm going to take him inside and give him that hundred dollars. Now, uh, step inside the tent with me. Yes, sir, I sure will. Hey, right in here. Now, watch your head now. That's it. Yeah. Great little town, Johannesburg, ain't it? <laughs> Last time I was here, well, I won't tell you about that. Uh, see, you're sure handy with that rope, kid. What's your name? Uh, uh William Penn Adair Rogers. Uh, Will, for short. Now, about that hundred... Yeah, uh, from the States, ain't you? Well, uh, sit down. Easy does it, I always say. Thanks, partner. I'm from the Indian Territory... Little old wide place in the road we call Claremont. No, what are you doing down here in South Africa? I got here sort of roundabout. Sold my herd up home and tried to head for South America with a friend. But first we had to go to London. Spent two whole days hunting for an outfit called Piccadilly Circus. We found out that it was the name of a street. <laughs> well, how come you landed down here in South Africa then? Well, from London we headed for South America and Dick, uh, he's my friend, got homesick and went back on the boat. Then I come on over here at the Boer War. Guess it ended about the same day I landed here. I've been training some remounts for the Army. And that's all. <laughs> so I was mighty glad to get that chance at that $100. Yes, sir, and you sure earned it, too. Now, uh, can you handle a horse as well as you can rope? Oh, sure. <laughs> Rode the range ever since I could straddle a horse. Well, how'd you like to join my outfit here as riding roper? Going on to Australia. What do you say? Uh, suits me. I started out to see the world and get a little fun on the side. <laughs> Don't matter whether it's Australia or South Africa. Well, then it's all settled. Now, just you move around, get acquainted with the boys and the horses while I get back to the crowd. Uh, just a minute, mister. Uh, uh, how about that hundred dollars? I don't mean to, you know, like to mention it or bother you, but I sure do need it plenty. <laughs> I'm broke. Mm, that's so. Well, uh, tell you the truth, uh, partner, I'm... Kind of hard up myself. But I'll tell you, I'll put you in my show instead. And I'll bill you as the Cherokee kid. What do you say? Well, uh, that'll amount to three squares a day, won't it? And a chance to see some more of the world. Why, I reckon so. Sure. <laughs> So with Texas Jack's little one-ring circus, Will Rogers, the Cherokee kid, played South Africa, Australia, and the Orient. Circus life was tiring, and Bill was glad when the show crossed the Pacific and set up in San Francisco. But the young cowboy was homesick, so he went back to Claremore, Oklahoma, for a rest. Coming out of the Nickelodeon one night, he strolled down the main street. Bill! Hello, Bill! <laughs> Heard you got back. Well, if it ain't Zach Mulhall, you old new you. <laughs> Hello there, fella. Yeah, been with some Wild West outfit in your end, weren't you, Bill? Yeah, you should have caught me. I was a Cherokee kid. God. Yeah, got back to Frisco wearing my overalls for underwear. <laughs> what you doing, Zach? Well, I'm getting together an outfit for the pike at the St. Louis Exposition. A lot of your old friends going along. I'd like to have you with us, Bill. Thanks, Zach. I'll just, uh, I'll think it over. Doggone it. 
Kind of tame around here, roping horses out an audience. Well, what do you know about that? The fortune teller's booth over there. <laughs> Claremore's getting to be a big town, all right. Tell your fortune for a dime, Jen. Step right this way into the gypsy tent, only a dime. Say, Bill, only a dime. get your fortune told? Hmm? What say? Oh, it's just a lot of fake stuff, Zach. What? Haven't got anything you want to keep a secret, have you? Not that I know of. Well, go on in. You may get the surprise of your life. Say, I might at that. Uh, wait here for me, Zach, will you? All right, Bill. Okay, Zuliki. Here's your dime. Ah. Uh, oh, you have a very strange hand, sir. It's amazing. Ah, uh, I see here. I know you don't. That bumps where a mule bit me. Uh, but I... Yes, I see great fortune ahead of you. You, yes, you will become very famous. You will be on the stage. Ah, uh, you will talk everywhere. People will pay to hear you. Ah, oh, that's enough. Never heard of such foolishness my whole life. Why, who would ever pay to listen to a Cherokee cowhand like me? <laughs> Leaving Claremore, Will Rogers joined Jack Mulhall's Wild West show. But after a while, Will grew tired of the circus business and teamed up with another cowboy in a rope and pony vaudeville act. One night, he's standing in the wings of a theater. Another performer in the show walks up beside him, and they watch the act out on the stage. We ain't been doing so well this week, bud. Folks out there must be sitting on their hands. Can't seem to get them worked up. You ought to give them a little talk in your act, Bill. When your partner rides on as it is now... You throw your two ropes so quick the audience don't get the trick of it. Go on out and explain it to him first. Oh, shucks, I ain't no talker. Well, give him the same line you do backstage here. Just kidding. What are you afraid of? I ain't a talking act, that's all. But might try it out on him once. <laughs> Maybe. Well, here's my cue. Go on now, do what I tell you. Give him a little spiel. All right. <laughs> might as well try anything once. Good luck, Bill. Stop that noise, you folks. That goes for you, too, Professor. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I ought to call your showing up attention to this next little stunt uh, I'm going to pull on you, as I'm going to throw about two of these ropes at once, catching the pony with one and the rider with the other. Don't have any idea I'll get it, but here goes. <laughs> Good stuff. Don't try to kid me, brother. That gang out there is laughing at me. Why, sure they are. You're funny and you don't know it. It's the way you talk. Well, let me tell you something. I can talk as good as any of them, and a whole lot better than some. I ain't never going to open my trap on the stage again and make a fool out of myself. <laughs> It took Will Rogers a long time to discover that what a forgotten performer had told him was true, that his wit and geniality would make him famous. He soon dropped out of the Pony and Rope Act and found that audiences enjoyed having him stand up on a stage and in his dry, drawling voice talk to them in the droll fashion that later made him famous. He got one of those characteristic telegrams from Franz Ziegfeld and joined the Follies. And when he came out on the stage with his inevitable chewing gum and rope, everybody sat up to listen. Thank you. Thank you, folks. It, this is George, just sort of a little interlude, folks, to keep you in your seats and help Mr. Zigfield out while the girls are changing their outfits for you. <laughs> you know, we sure had quite a lot of trouble keeping our girls together on tour. Every town we went to, some of them would marry millionaires. You know? <laughs> yeah, but in a few weeks, they'd be divorced and catch up with the show again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, women are like elephants. I like to look at them, but I'd hate to own them. <laughs> you, you know, folks, I tell you, if they just put a lot of these here fallers pippins on that peace ship <laughs> in the same sort of costumes they wear here, <laughs> you know, they'd, they'd get the soldier boys out of the trenches for Christmas. <laughs> Not only that, but... I'm telling you, they'd have Kaiser Bill and Lloyd George and Clemenceau shooting craps to see which one had head the line to the stage door. <laughs> well, here they come, and there I go. Is the gent waiting to see? 
see you there, Mr. Rogers. Say, I almost forgot. Here's another telegram from Mr. Zigbo. Huh? <laughs> Can you beat that? He's sitting right out there in his front office, and when he wants to tell her feller backstage about something, just sends him a telegram. Hello, Mr. Rogers. Hi, hi. Evening, Mr. Rogers. Hello. Hello. I'll fix Mr. Rogers. Oh, hey, there. Wait, I want to talk to you, huh? sister. Just, yeah, just wait a second. You know, I see that that feller's out there again in the second row. Mm-hmm. Yeah, eight nights straight now, ain't it? Yeah. Cute, isn't he? Yo, know, say, say, that's a... That's a real, sure enough, pretty necklace I've seen you wearing when you come in tonight. Yes, it is nice, isn't it? And you kind of like getting into a limousine every night after the show, don't you? Well, it sure beats the subway. And he's a smart-looking young chap, too. Uh, what does he do for a living? Oh, he doesn't have to work. He has millions in his family. Huh? Well, uh, let me tell you something, sister. hope you won't mind my telling you this. No. But when it comes to a question of choosing a feller that can earn his own meal ticket and the guy that inherits his, <laughs> you're safer choosing the first one. Because if the other feller loses his, where are you? Well, out in the cold, I guess. Darn tootin' you are, sister. I've seen a lot, and I know. Well, thanks. Thanks, Mr. Rogers. I'll remember what you say. Now, this is Mr. Rogers, sir. Thank you, what can I do for you, mister? Uh, just come on in the dressing room. Okay. Sit down. Well, get right down to business, Mr. Rogers. I represent a newspaper syndicate. We'd like to have you do a feature article for us using the same line and technique you do in your act. Just rambling along naturally, speaking in the vernacular. Uh, the which? <laughs> Don't believe I quite follow you. Well, uh, we'd like to have you write articles for us the same way you talk. Uh, just sort of talk in print, huh? That's right. Well, maybe I could. Never thought I'd ever get so I could talk to folks out front. <laughs> but I'm still practicing. Don't want to fool you, though. Uh, I ain't a literary man. All I know is uh, just what I read in the papers. <laughs> So the Cherokee kid became a columnist and soon an international character. He left the Follies in 1926 to travel in Europe as America's minister without portfolio and ambassador of goodwill. When he returned to the United States, President Coolidge invited him to the White House. Bill put on his best blue suit and went down to see the president in Washington. President Coolidge, Mr. Will Rogers. Glad to have you here, Mr. Rogers. Uh beg pardon? I didn't quite catch the name. <laughs> Coolidge, Vermont. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Hello, Charlie. Hi, Hi Joe. Hello. 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 Sit down, won't you? All right. I've been looking forward to hearing you tell me all about your trip abroad. I feel you rendered a real service over there as a sort of unofficial ambassador of goodwill. Well, now, Mr. President, I, I don't want to pick no quarrel with you right off the bat, but uh, confidentially... I can't bear being called any ambassador of goodwill. Makes me feel like a kind of a patent medicine, you know, good for man or beast. <laughs> Still, you did us a lot of good over there at this time. I've been somewhat worried. Oh, go on. <laughs> I never knew any Vermonter to do much worrying on $75,000 a year. <laughs> Pardon me, Mr. President. Ambassador Morrow is here. Now, yeah, have him come in. Yes, sir. Mm. Mr. Morrow. Oh, good evening, Ambassador. Hey, Mr. President. I want you to meet Will Rogers. Ambassador Morrow, Will. How do you do, Mr. Ambassador? Glad I to feel as if I knew you very well indeed, Mr. Rogers. Uh, we were just talking about Mr. Rogers' trip abroad. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, pretty near didn't get over there at all, as a matter of fact. Had some trouble getting my passport. You see, we don't have no birth certificate down where I come from, in Oklahoma. They just take it for granted... That if a man's alive, why, he must have been born. <laughs> but your folks down here at the passport office just looking at me, they, they just wasn't convinced one bit that, uh, that I was uh, really here. <laughs> Had an awful time finding a man that could swear to him that I was really alive. <laughs> Of course, if it had been one of your congressmen, I could have understood. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, how did you find the service on our American line? Well, I'm, I managed to get across <laughs> with the aid of a couple of lemons, <laughs> but the line made money on me. <laughs> well, I understand everybody in Europe enjoyed your visit. 
Well, I don't know, Mr. Ambassador. I saw about everybody and everything there was to see, and it's just awful nice to me, every last one of them. You know, folks is folks when you get it the right side, no matter whether they're kings or cowboys. About the only thing I missed was in Cairo. Yeah, what was that? I guess I was the only tourist there who never went out to see the Sphinx. <laughs> I told him I didn't need to. I'd done seen Cal Coolidge. <laughs> well, it's certainly good to hear you laugh, Mr. President. Call that a laugh? <laughs> I uh, think I have a good idea, Morrow. That's why I asked you to come here and meet Will. You'd better take him into Mexico with you. His humor might help to smooth things out down there. If you can make President Kai's laugh, it will help me at this particular time. That's a pretty solemn Indian we have to deal with. I don't say anything against Indians now. My my papa, he is one eight Cherokee and Mama, she is, she is a four. Guess that makes me about, about one-eighth cigar store Indian. <laughs> Indians is all right, though, boys. Yes, sir. My folks didn't come over on the Mayflower, <laughs> but they met the boat. <laughs> Will Rogers continued serving his country and his fellow man. Relief causes, floods, earthquakes, and disaster brought his cheerful smile and kind charity to their aid. After a few years, he was called to Hollywood, and the lovable, whimsical characters he created on the screen are not likely to be forgotten. His old car was a familiar sight on the movie set, with Bill in the front seat, a typewriter on his knees, picking out his daily column. Hi, John, come on over here a minute. I want you to read something. Say, Bill. Huh? Wiley Post just came on the lot. He's looking for you. Now, before you get tied up with him, I'd like to have you look over this new story. Oh, we got plenty of time for that. While he's flying on up to Seattle first, I'm going to join him as soon as he's ready, about a week. You know, I got an old codger up in Point Barrow who wanted this. I'll be back now. I'll be back in time to start with you boys. Just y'all don't worry. Say, now listen to this piece I wrote. I want to try it out on you. All right, Bill. Huh? Remember me, don't you? Well, howdy, old timer. Where'd you hail from? Why, you and me are used to... Ride together with Zach Mulhall's outfit. Yeah? <laughs> that sure was a mighty big show, wasn't it? Say, you look kind of like you'd been ridden instead of road. Here you go, boy. Here, take it. Good luck. Say, thanks, Bill. This will sure help. Did you ever see him before? Uh, say, if all the fellers had come to me and... Say this in Zach's old outfit. If this telling the truth, it'd fill the whole state of Oklahoma. Now, listen to this piece here I wrote before I shoot it off to the paper. Now, wait a minute. Huh? What's Looks like Wiley's found you. Coming this way. See if you can postpone that flight, will you, Bill? Oh, now, no, postpone nothing. Hello, Wiley. Just sit there on the running board now and just make yourself to home. I'll be done now. Just jiffy. And uh, we'll slip on out to rank. I was overlooking at your bungalow, Bill. Dandy place they fixed for you. Yeah, they got the old cute, ain't they? <laughs> Electric kitchen, lots of Indian trophies. Fitted it up for a moving picture star instead of an old cowboy like me. I got all I need right here, Wiley. Right in this old rumble seat. And it's uh, sort of private, you know. At least I can see who's right, coming at me. Right, okay, we'll take it. You ready, Bill? Yeah, coming right along. Uh, Wiley, now, now you just sprawl yourself out here in the car and uh, take a snooze, boy. Cover your face up with a newspaper. Nobody can tell whether you're awake or not. I do it all the time. Boys, I'm coming. As we all know, Will Rogers met Wiley Post in Seattle, where they began their flight to Alaska. At Fairbanks, they set, set the plane down to refuel and chat with the head of the airport. Well, now, you know, I wish you'd see if this gets mailed home, Joe. It's a dandy fox piece. Well, sure, I will. I think you two ought to wait over another day or so, Bill, till the weather clears. Just got a report of fog all along your route up to Point Barrow. And it's registering 45 below now. Oh, that's okay, Joe. If I tell you, if we meet bad weather, we'll just set her down, see, and, and open up a can of chili. <laughs> we'll, we'll throw a party till it clears, won't we, Wiley? Uh, yeah. I can hear you, Bill. Everything's all right to start when you're ready to go. Well, Wiley's kind of a Cal Coolidge on conversation. None of it's going to bother you being too long. Anyhow, Joe, shoot this package off and more much obliged. I'll see you they get off right away, Bill. All right, then, Bill. Okay, here we go. Off for somewhere. Goodbye, Joe. Had a fine time here. 
see you the next time we're around this way. Goodbye, Bill. Bye, Wiley. Good luck. Nice fella, that Joe. I guess you're pretty near like everyone, don't you, Bill? Well, Wiley, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I never met a man I didn't like. Rogers lived to make his fellow men happy. He spoke simple, homely truths. His lance was clear, straight thinking. His opponent shield, sham, and pretend. Today, Will Rogers has two shrines. One, of stone and bronze standing on a windswept hill near his hometown of Claremore, Oklahoma. The other, in the hearts of his fellow men. Now, Gabriel Heater with a story of chemistry. Let me tell you tonight about a story of chemistry I found in a recent headline. Termites eating up floors of public buildings. And back of an alarming headline, here's what I found. An enemy boring away night and day, eating wood and digesting it, too. Up and down America, it goes on night and day. Termites take an alarming toll each year, leaving behind a trail of damage and destruction. Measured in dollars an estimated damage of $40 million every year. But DuPont research chemists, wood preservation experts, they went to work. And their collaboration produced a chemical which made wood unfit to eat, but even better fitted for man's use. And any self-respecting termite just had to pass it up. Out of a wonderland of chemistry, chromated zinc chloride. And here's a quick roll call of what it does in addition to robbing termites of their dinner. It prevents dry rot or decay caused by rot-producing fungi. These, incidentally, do even more damage than termites. It makes wood fire-resistant. And most amazing of all, actual tests have shown when lumber has been treated by chromated zinc chloride, it will last from three to ten times as long as untreated lumber. Another product for treating wood has just been announced by DuPont. It's called New Improved Lignosand. The result of 10 years' research. A new chemical which you probably will never see, yet it will save America's lumber industry millions of dollars by protecting lumber against an ugly discoloration called sap stain. And lumber will come to you bright and clean. Living evidence, ladies and gentlemen, of chemical research. It works night and day for everybody's well-being. Night and day, billions, trillions of insects take a fearful toll destroying crops and gardens, carry disease and rob us all in some way. Japanese beetles, house flies, the coddling moth, just to mention a few. I saw them all at the DuPont Experimental Station in screened cages and working day in and day out to find quicker, cheaper, better ways to destroy them were DuPont chemists working for your well-being and mine. That's what is meant by the DuPont Pledge Better things for better living through chemistry. Next week at the same time, DuPont again presents The Cavalcade of America. A Pretty Girl is Like a Melody from Ziegfeld Follies of 1919. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>